Good morning, everybody. Good morning. <laughs> you guys can come in and find a seat. <laughs> so good to see everybody this morning. Um, yeah, this first song we're going to sing is called My King Forever. And um, I heard it said recently that our singing today is not our actual worship. It's our expression of worship. But in Romans 12:1, it talks about how um, when we view God's mercy, we offer our lives as a living sacrifice. And that is our worship. It, my entire life. So it's not the actual singing right now. We're just expressing our worship to Jesus. But our entire lives, as Romans 12 says, is our true and proper worship unto him. And in this song, there's a part in the bridge where it says, I lift my hands up, lay my whole life down before you. And that is our worship. So just keep that in mind as we're singing today. That um, if the Lord is speaking to you and putting something on your heart as far as just things that you maybe need to lay down before him as your spiritual act of worship, as we lay our entire lives down, our careers, our desires, our marriages, our friendships. Yeah, Lord, we just ask you right now to just reveal anything that we have put before you, any idols, God. Anything that we've exalted, even our fear, anything we've exalted above you, Lord God, anything that we've made bigger in our minds, bigger than you, God, we lay it down. And we want to we want to worship you. We want to worship you. We want to worship you, Lord God. The way that you deserve. Because you deserve it all. We sing all the time that you're worthy of it all. We say you're worthy of our entire lives. We lay our lives down. Your word says to take up our cross daily. To die to ourselves. This is what you require, God. This is what you're asking. You gave your life. And so in return, we give ours back. That's what you're worthy of. So this is our worship, God. Not just singing a song today. My entire everything. We love you. We love you, God. We love you. We say that you're worthy. You are worthy of everything. We just want to bless you. Thank you. This is our response to you this morning. Our response is just to praise you. everyone just please stand as we sing this song. Thank you, Lord. You gave your life for mine. Nailed to the cross, you crucified all of my sin and shame. It was washed by your mercy. treasure I find my reason for living so let my life become an offering to the one who is worthy we're going to sing that again you gave because you gave your life for mine nailed to the cross you crucified all of my sin and shame, it was washed by your mercy. And you are the treasure I find, my reason for living. So let my life become an offering to the one who is worthy. Yes, all praise. Oh, praise to the Lord most high. Oh, praise to the one who saved my life. Oh, praise. 
storm the gates of my heart the veil in between was torn apart now you hold the keys to the grave cause you bring things to life and you roll stones
fall down at your feet. We say, have your way, God. We make you Lord of our lives. Today, God, we say, be Lord, have your way. You call the shots, God. You lead us, Lord. We're asking you to lead us. Jesus, you said, follow me. You said, come, follow me. So, God, may we not make decisions without consulting you first. May we not try and live our lives, Lord God, without you, without relationship, Lord, with you. That you would be our voice that leads us, Lord God, in everything we do in Jesus' name. This is my chamber, this is my chamber, here is where I live, God, every lion did shout, this is my chamber, and I will make room for you, to do whatever you want. Of me and more of him. Less of me and more of you, God. Less of me and more of you. Here is where I lay it down. Every This is my surrender. Here is where I lay it down. Every lie and every song. This is my surrender. And I do make room. Do whatever you want to, do whatever you want to, and I will make room for you, no, do whatever you want to, come do whatever you want to, oh, but I will make room. Yeah. 
can move it on over whatever it is you can take it away my me time you can take that away if it's in your way Facebook time, my Instagram time, my television time, you can take it away, if it's in your way, my friend time, mm, whatever it is, my work time, you can take it Standing in your way, Lord, standing in your way, I will make room for you, oh, to do whatever you want to, to do whatever you want to, I will, I will make room.
draw me close to you. Never let me go. I lay it all down again. Just to hear you say that I'm your friend. For you are my desire. No one else could take your place. I feel the warmth of your embrace. So help me find the way to bring me back to you. You wrote. No one else could take your place oh, when I feel the warmth of your embrace. So help me find the way, lead me back.
your spirit make me new and I will fall at your feet I will fall at your feet and I will worship you here light the way by the power of your words I am restored I am redeemed by your spirit I am free and I will fall at your feet I will And I will fall at your feet. I will fall at your feet. And I will worship you here. And I will fall. Oh
Servants of kings who rescued the world this day. This is who we worship. This is our God, amen. Amen. I don't know if many of you know this, but um, my husband and I, we, we coach at a, at a gym nearby. And yesterday, our gym had this event, and I helped to put it on, and they asked me to lead this um, mindfulness time. And there's a, a gym full of people. And now this is, so this is my workplace now, and I want to speak to those of you who are in the workplace who don't have like a vocational ministry position. That's probably like all of you. <laughs> and in this five minutes, we sat and I led this room of people through a moment of quiet and reflection and spoke biblical principles without like saying it. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I wanna encourage you that wherever you are, and people were in tears when it was over, just five minutes, and they were in tears. Thank you so much for speaking that over me. Thank you so much for saying that. Thank you so much for leading me in that moment. And I want to encourage you in your workplace, in your school, in your neighborhood, at the park, wherever you find yourself, you carry the very spirit of God in you. We sing, this is our God who came to rescue the world. The same resurrection power that raised Jesus from the grave dwells within you. Within you. So if there was a powerful moment in five minutes at a gym of quiet, just quiet, how much more powerful is it that we are in a room right now with the very presence of God? Amen? We are in the presence of God, family. This is no small thing. So can we sing that chorus one more time together? Because we are in the presence of God, and His presence fills us, and His Holy Spirit fills you. So please feel free to lift your hands and glorify the Lord. Or if you need to just be quiet with Jesus, but you and Jesus right now, and ask the Lord, fill me, God, because this is our God. He's come to rescue the world. So let's sing this together, family.
So if I'm going to sit in a gym for five minutes with people and speak life over them, I want to speak life over you this morning from the word of God. Would you close your eyes and would you receive this word? It says in Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. We love you so much, family. Would you turn and greet one another? And all my introverted friends say, oh, no. <laughs> Welcome to New Hope Hawaii Kai. Yeah. We'll just make it. mention your everybody good morning how we doing you happy to be in church today all right well it's good to see you. I'm Pat this is my wife Tara we're here with your announcements today uh, welcome hey if you're here for the first time we want to welcome you and uh, in your bulletin you'll see a connect card you can put your basic info connect in there card. I promise you we won't spam you but when the, uh, when the bucket comes around for our tithes and offerings, you can put that info in there. We'd love to connect with you. Or you can also text the word aloha. Say aloha. 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 Mm. To the, uh, the number on the screen, it's also on your bulletins as well. You can text that word. And just someone from our church would love to get connected with you. Yeah. Uh, so we're just stoked on that because we have a lot of things happening. Here's so one thing that's things. happening is our men's breakfast hey. next Saturday. Come on, it's a dude breakfast. It's a dude breakfast. Yes. Now, we haven't had one of these in quite a while. We're going to be partying down at New Hope, Oahu, and Oahu. 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 All right. Oahu. It's Sand Island with Pastor Wayne Cordero. It's going to be a blast. Hey, look, we have like 35, 40 men signed up. Let's just, let's just fill the slots up. If you go to our website, meet us down there at Sand Island, New Hope. If you go to our website, the registration is on our website. It's a little banner. You can't miss it. It's this banner that w won't go away. It just will not go away because it's waiting for you. <laughs> it's waiting for you it's to click on it. You. Yeah. <laughs> now I can hear it. Can you hear it? All the ladies are going, what about the ladies? I heard it. I right? heard that. I heard that. All right, ladies. This is all I'm going to say because I can't announce it quite yet. Mark your calendars right now for April 26th and 27th yeah. okay mark your calendars right Hope. now april 26th and 27th get your child care in order dad take care of the kids so you let your wife have a night and a morning with her sisters in the presence of the lord because it's happening Woo! Yes. all right come on fam look hey we have another <laughs> thing we want to uh, encourage you with hey many of you maybe have family members or friends that are dealing with uh, mental illness or mental health issues and we have a support group that we partnered with NAMI. Uh, NAMI is NAMI. the National Alliance of Mental Illness. And what we do is uh, once a month at our ministry center, and that's coming up on March 11th at 7 p.m., once a month we get together. And for those of you that are have family, you're, you're dealing with, you're, you're basically just saying, look, I'm in it with you. And how can I, how, what are you doing that's working for you? Or how are we wrestling through this together? It's a support group for those of us that are wrestling with that. And how many of us know we got a lot of things. It's yeah. not just if you have like clinical depression. It's any kind of mental health that you feel like, man, I just need some people to rally around with me. Support. We'd love to invite you to that. Our yeah. information is on the website. We have Easter coming up at Easter. the end of the month. Come on, let's that do it. so quick. It did. It's happening yeah. like way too Yesterday fast. Yesterday was Christmas. Yeah, yeah. I know. All right, Good Friday service. When is Good it? Good Friday is on Good Friday. Yeah, it's on Good Friday. <laughs> Good, Friday. Good Friday. The 29th at 6 p.m., we're partnering with New Hope Community Church. Come yes. on, they're going to join us right here. It's going to be amazing. We're here for Good Friday, family. That's Isn't that right. exciting? Yeah, yes. and then what about our Easter services? It's on Easter Sunday. It's on Easter Sunday. It's on Easter Sunday at 8 a.m. and at 10 a.m. 
what's the date for Easter? Sunday? The date is 31st of, e uh, Sunday of March. <laughs> this is the best that we've done at this. This is the bar. Okay? This is the standard. This is what it is. So Easter Sunday, we have two, two services, services for you. 8 a.m. Child care will be provided. Our children's arc at 10 a.m. 10 a.m. And so we have a lot more information for you. It's going to be updated on our website, just like everything else. If you want information or where to go and a next step, our website is where to go. Can I help for Easter Sunday? Absolutely. And more information about that will be on our website. All right. <laughs> is that it? <laughs> That's it. Those are announcements, okay? Those are announcements. Let's pray for the tithes and offerings. We need to pray. Because we need Jesus yeah. today. Amen. Oh, Lord, we just thank you. Um, God, we thank you that you've given us um, so much. And that worship and that giving and that what we do at our jobs and where we spend our time is actually all worship to you. So, Lord, we take our time and our talent and our treasure and we actually just lift it to you. And so, God, we thank you, we love you, and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, Amen family. Hey, you know, we're just going to jump right into the message. How about that, team? All right. Hey, in your notes, in your bulletin, here's what I'd love for you to do. I'd love for you to take out your bulletin, read that scripture with me. It's Philippians, and we can read it together and go. And I am certain that God, who began the good work within you, will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. Come on, family, God is not done with you. Someone say amen. amen. Come on, that's so true of you and me. I want you to ask yourself this question. Have you ever been part of a team that did something incredible? Like maybe you were part of the sports team that went and, uh, and took state. You got your regionals. Uh, you, took, you took whatever, like you went to the championships. Or maybe there was a work group that you had that really did something and accomplished something amazing in your workplace. Something that hadn't happened in the company before. Have you ever been part of a winning team? I haven't. <laughs> what I will say is I've been part of this winning team. But see, I didn't do, <laughs> amen. See, I didn't do group sports though. I know, shocking information. You mean you weren't on the basketball team, Pat? No, not at all. No, you didn't play football? Not even that, I know. This is blowing everyone's mind. You mean you were a gymnast and a diver? Absolutely. Look at Jay moaned. That was a verbal, audible moan. Now, was it because I liked the leotards and the Speedo? Absolutely it was. Because I look good, bro. I was a ho. You know what I'm saying? I want to leave you with that visual. We can all go home now. But now think of a time when you were a part of a team that fell apart. Disagreement, so frustrating, right? It's hard to even decide in your family where you want to go to dinner sometimes, let alone trying to accomplish like the family trip without any drama. Like some of you just barely made it here. I know because us too. I'm just saying that sometimes it's easier to like avoid the team dynamic. Here's the thing about the good work. The good work of God is teamwork. And there's no getting around it. The good work of God in you and in me is team work. There's really nothing that we can do about it. We want to make it so individual and in our culture. We love hyper-individual. We like the self-directed methods. We like all of that stuff. But really there's an element of our faith that if we don't connect with the people around us, we're missing something powerful. Because none of us alone project the image of God completely. All of us together demonstrate something more powerful that's the picture of Jesus in his family, in his body. You know, even in the Bible, Paul and Barnabas, they were part of a team. It was a small team, but they disagreed so sharply, it actually changed the direction of their ministry for a season. But this is why unity and agreement and partnership and togetherness matters so much, because it actually speaks to something so deep in us. We have been deeply designed for rich and meaningful and authentic community. But so much of our culture removes that or replaces it with something artificial. There's reasons why, the, the, like statistically, areas of our next generation's brain are not developing in the same way because of their interaction with screens and not actual faces to face. 
And, and your brain knows the difference. Your brain knows the difference when you're in front of a real actual human being and when you're interacting with a human being through a screen. Your brain can tell. I think the challenge with our faith is sometimes we think we can live it by ourselves. And sometimes I think that because maybe we've been hurt or frustrated by people, here's the such the weird tension that we live in is that people hurt and people heal. People hurt, but people heal. And in fact, the only way that I can hurt or heal from the people who hurt me is by finding people to heal with me. Because to remove myself, and like we talked about last week with walls and gates, to, to use the pain to build walls around my heart doesn't actually protect me, it imprisons me. We forget that the holistic power of the gospel is both individual and corporate. When I got saved, I didn't just get saved individually for me, I got saved into a family. I wasn't just Pat the chosen one, we are a chosen family family, a chosen priesthood. We are the body of Christ, collectively the bride of Christ, the family of Christ. I have as much of an individual identity in Jesus as I do a corporate identity with you. But that can be challenging. I don't like group projects, I'll be honest with you. I find them difficult. Maybe you're in school right now and you're like, I can totally agree. Because I had to rely on people. I don't like doing that sometimes. I, I, I've had to work hard at, at like learning how to do group work. Maybe you can relate to this. Some of you are really great at team. You're more collaborative. It's awesome and it's amazing. I've had such a struggle with this sometimes. I remember I was in Bible college and I'm supposed to be like a super Jesus Christian because you're at Bible college and that's what you're supposed to do. And I was with this group. We had a project and I was like 23 at the time. 24, and they paired me with a bunch of 18-year-olds. And I'm going to tell you right now, I was frustrated. If you're 18 in the house, God bless you. I love you. This was a, a, a time long ago. This guy comes into the group completely unprepared, didn't do his stuff, making excuses again and again and again. I, I, I just, I just, whoa, group work. <laughs> just give me the assignment, okay? Let me write the paper. I'll get it done. I went off on this guy. I'm going to be honest. I lost my Christian in that moment. He came in one day and he was like, I was just having a real hard day. And I was like, oh, you're having a hard day? Oh. You know what's hard? Paying bills. <laughs> Paying for this class that you are late to, bro. That's what's hard. I got mad. That was a long time ago. <laughs> I'm different now. <laughs> I'm chill guy Pat. And Chill Guy Pat is cool, man. <laughs> chill Guy Pat just lets it all go by. Just water off a duck's back. I am not Chill Guy Pat. Jesus says it's, people will know that you're my disciples by the way that you love each other. It's no wonder that he addresses conflict resolution in Matthew 18 before he starts talking about um, you know, the power of a unified prayer among his people because Jesus knows the power of unity. Unity is powerful. Agreement is powerful. What we can do together compared to what I can do alone is, it can really be unprecedented and it can really change our lives. The good work of God is teamwork. So how do we see this play out in Nehemiah? Well, number one, what we see is in chapter 2, we see Nehemiah after 150 days of prayer. So this is just one moment, right? He's gone through it. He's toured the wall. He's done the work. He's wept and he's grieved and he's felt the tension. He's seen the brokenness. He's seen it all. And instead of rushing to fix the problem, he goes to God for something like 150 days of praying just to check his heart. And then he says to them, the people, the nobles, the leaders, you see the trouble we're in, guys. Jerusalem's in ruins and its gates have been burned with fire. Come, let us. Come, let me rebuild. No, he doesn't say that. He says, let us rebuild. Corporately, this is our assignment. Let us rebuild the wall of Jerusalem. And we, not I, we will no longer be in disgrace. Can you imagine? Put the singular in there. Come, watch me rebuild the wall and I will no longer be in disgrace. It's not just about Nehemiah. It's about the people of God. 
I also told them about the gracious hand of my God on me. But notice where Nehemiah does get singular. He talks about his God like he's, that's my God. Like there's this connection that he has with Yahweh that, that is so transforming him. It's made him move from the safety of his job as a cupbearer to the unknown and the brokenness of Jerusalem. My God has been gracious on me and the king has said to me, they replied, let us start rebuilding. Let's read that last part together. So they began this good work. The good work of God is teamwork. Now remember, we, 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 we dropped this little Easter egg last week that Nehemiah's name. Now it's a combination of two names. It's Naham. Say it. It's fun, right? Some, that's your next baby name. I'm going to tell you right now. Naham. And Yah. So Naham means consoling breath. It means to bring strong, like to breathe strongly. And of course, Yah being the sacred name of God. So Nehemiah is literally translated the consoling breath of God. What do we see? A picture of the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament. And do you notice the moment that the Holy Spirit shows up? The moment that the consoling breath of God shows up. What couldn't happen in over 70 years, suddenly something happened. It is not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. The second that Nehemiah shows up, something happened in just a few moments that couldn't have happened, that didn't happen for 70 years. And I would invite us to think about the fact that the things that we want to see restored in our lives, how much of it has been done in our own effort. And we have been fighting against this thing. It's like walking through mud. But when the Holy Spirit shows up to do what only the Holy Spirit can do, what took us years and years might take a moment, but what might take years and years of his work in our life is worth it. Because only he can do what he can do. Let's invite the Holy Spirit. I think this is why Paul in Ephesians chapter 4 says live this life that's worthy of this calling and be humble and gentle and patient, bearing with one another in love. That sounds like the fruit of the Spirit. And then he says make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace, one body, one Spirit, one hope, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God who is over all and through all. See, this is why I believe it. So this is us. This is you and me, the saints. But this is why teamwork, when Holy Spirit, like team is an evidence of the Holy Spirit. Unity is absolutely an evidence of the Holy Spirit. But another thing is evidence, it, it, what's so powerful about team is that team doesn't require experts. If we look at the text, we see a lot of people. We see Eliashib, the high priest. We know Eliashib. And we see the other priests. They start to rebuild the sheep gate. Interestingly enough, why are they, they there? Because the sheep gate, you bring in the sheep. And the sheep would be used for the sacrifice. So people are owning their particular area and assignment, which is pretty cool. They dedicate it, set up its doors, build the walls. They go to the Tower of the Hundred, which they dedicate. And all of these people from the town of Jericho work next to them. And beyond them, there's Zakur, the son of Imri. Beyond the fish gate, there's Hasanaah. They laid the beams. There's all of these people in this text that you and I don't necessarily know. But here they are in a moment of time. And here are the vocations. There are priests. There are goldsmiths. There are perfume makers. There are families. There are temple servants. There are merchants and homeowners. And I bet none of them had a civil engineering degree. How does the perfumer know how to build a wall? I, I'm just saying that sometimes we think we need to possess some degree of expertise in order to participate in the good work God is asking us to participate in. And God didn't call you because you're an expert. He called you because he's the expert and you needed him whether you need, knew it or not. Amen? Amen. And I know right then and there, that's really frustrating because I don't want to admit my need. I don't need nobody. I need nothing. I don't need nobody. Yeah, you do, bro. 
You do. I don't need anybody. Yes, you do, sis. You need help. You need to pray and ask God for the, the, the sisters and the people around you. Where is the areas you need help? But I don't know how to do that. Most of us didn't. Most of us are scared sometimes to initiate new things because the new things that God is calling us to, we feel like we don't have the tools for. If only I was given the tools. Let's think about our parents and their grandparents. What tools were they given? Well, like half a shovel? Maybe a stick with no spade? Like, we keep waiting for all of the answers before we take the step of obedience. God is not requiring expertise. But he is requiring this. I'm not saying that we have to lack wisdom. I, I ask the people who are around us that possess the wisdom. But God's work of agreement and unity and power and co connection, it doesn't require exceptional skill, but it does require exceptional willingness. You'll notice in verse 5, something happens. It's the first mention of some internal tension that's happening. It says, beside them, the Tekoites made repairs, but their nobles did not lift a finger to help or support them. The next version of this is the, the Young's literal translation. It says it like this. So they didn't lift a finger. Do your finger like that. Like that. They didn't lift it. You did more than they did right now. Congratulate, you're already winning. You did more than they did. It's great. By his hand have the Tekoites, they were strengthened, and their honorable ones have not brought in their neck to the service of the Lord. Because that's the literal translation. What we're talking about is bending the neck. It's a picture of arrogance and insolence. And so that's why in the ESV, it will say the nobles didn't stoop to do the hard labor. Why? Why? Like, what? Bro, get on the train. The, 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 the king of Persia has given us all the money. He's given us his forest and his wood. He's giving us authority and protection. He's giving us everything we need. Get on board. But why did they not? I don't have all of the answers to that. If they were noble, means they were probably of a higher class or birth. If they were honorable, then maybe they had more money or maybe they had more to lose. Maybe they were more comfortable. You know, at this time, they were getting rebuked because they hadn't built the temple. There was prophets at the time that were saying, hey guys, your houses look really good, but my house looks like trash. Like, we got to fix this. So maybe they were the, one of the nobles that had really nice houses, and they're like, I mean, we're good. Go ahead, guys. What is it about our comfort? What is it about what we think we know? What is it about our entitlement? What is it about our insecurity that doesn't allow us to step into a powerful willingness to follow Jesus in his good work? Family, that is a question that only you can answer with Jesus. If you're having a hard time answering it, I would suggest talking to a mature believer who you trust and asking the question. Come on. Amen. And I'll refer you to Calvin or, <laughs> or Carl or Jay. <laughs> because that kind of, it's powerful because it's a group effort. And when people, and when there's a sense of unity and there's a sense of momentum, and people, and I'm not talking about when you've been guilted in to do something. I'm not talking about when you've been spiritually manipulated and made to feel like if you don't do this thing, you're not on track with what God wants. I'm saying when, when there is a genuine sense of momentum and movement, and you can think about your marriage, you can think about your family, you can think about your workplace, whatever context you're in, and someone is intentionally, by a weak character, choosing not to buy into this moment, you can feel it. Maybe it's a weakness of character. Maybe it's a weakness of, of maturity. Maybe it's just a sense of rebellion. Maybe they're just insecure. Who knows what the reason might be, but it is really noticeable. Their issue didn't seem to be insecurity, though. It seemed to be more arrogance. Family, I just, I'm going to speak for me. I do not want to spend 
any time in my life being too arrogant to partner the work of God that he's invited me to do. I just don't want to do it. I don't want to be 45. I don't want to be 50, 60, 70. I want to be 90 years old, half my size, because I'm shrinking currently. I just want to be 90 and just like whatever God is saying to do, God, that's what I want to do. Because when I am following him, I am fully alive in Christ. But like that's why team is a project, right? It's a group project. Because next to him, repairs are being made by Levites and under the supervision of Rahum. And you read all of this and next to them and next to them, not only can everyone participate, but everyone needs to participate. It's important. Here is also something that is true. Can God accomplish things without us? Absolutely. Does he want to? No. Because he likes being with his kids. Here's how I picture this. My best effort at helping God do anything is like when my kids were three and wanted to help me with the dishes. And it honestly causes more frustration. I want to help dad. No thanks. I'd like to keep the floors not wet. I'd like to not have food on clean dishes, right? Like, but they want to participate. That's how it is with me at my best. I'm just a toddler, just running around with a dirty plate saying, Dad, look what I can do. <laughs> this is us at our best. And then the Holy Spirit says, great job, man. And he washes that plate. And he says, we did it together, didn't we, bud? Yeah, man, we did. God could do it all. He could call legions of angels. But he called you. He called you. If there is someone that is disagreeing with God's opinion about themselves, I want to invite you to agree with what God says about you. And you're like listing all the reasons why God's mad at you already. Or why he doesn't want to be with all the things. There's so many things. Goodness, there's so many things. But I want to invite you to hear the whisper of the Father's voice saying, you're my child. And I love you. Come near to me. Abide with me. And you will bear much fruit. Amen. So this is who we are, by the way. I want to show us this because, actually, we'll wait on that slide. Who shows up? 38 different leaders, seven villages, even other Israelites. All these people come through to help the group project. Everybody's rally. But here's the thing is when people are secure in their identity and busy with their purpose, they don't have time for division. When people are, are secure in their identity and they're, they're, they're on they're, they're standing on kingdom business. They don't have time to pick apart the service because they didn't like it. They don't have time to pick apart the neighbor that has the plank eye. It, it looks so much bigger than the speck in my own. When I know who I am in Jesus and I'm busy with what God has asked me to do, I have less time for complaining. I have less time for criticizing because all I want to do is be more in love with him and do what he's asking me to do. Amen? Amen? I have less to complain about my wife, less to complain about my kids, less to complain about my boss or my neighbor or my work when I know who I am and I realize I have all treasure in heaven given to me and I know exactly what he wanted me to do. A couple months ago, we took this every gifts inventory. You guys remember that? I kept talking about it. I was like getting super annoyed with, annoying with it. And we had, I think like about 100 people filled it out, but I think a number of you didn't put the code in. But that's fine. We have 77 people that filled out this, this, this gifts test. I'm going to show you the result. This is the gift map of our community. Okay, we have the interpersonal gifts. We use different language. We use the technical gifts and the teamwork and the leadership. Intercultural, civic, and artistic. Here's our result. Of the 77 people... 77 people that filled out this, 40 of you scored highest in interpersonal gifting, empathy, compassion, collaborative work. 40 of you. There's about seven of you that are exemplary. And I know who you know. I don't know who you are. This is all anonymous. Don't <laughs> <worry>. <laughs> and I've sent it away. No. Uh, 
But look at the second one. 36 of us said we scored in teamwork. Woo! What's that about? That's nuts. Teamwork, guys. Come on. Oh, you get some smart guys in here. 28 critical thinkers. Where'd you go to school? <laughs> oh, Jay went Kaiser. Who went Kaiser? <laughs> Who went Kalani? Punaho or Ka I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. Look at that. Look at that. Leadership number four. Technical, intercultural. Look at management, 19. Entrepreneurs. We got 18 entrepreneurs. That's why some of you sent me emails. Let's do this. And I'm like, ah. Some of you guys are entrepreneurs. You got 17 communicators, 14 artistic. We got some civic-minded people. And we have 11 financial people. And they all went to Financial Peace University. This is who we are. It's a snapshot of who we are. It's not the whole picture. But this is the gift map of our church. What could we accomplish? Now, now here's, I know what I'm supposed to do. Can I just let you in behind the curtain? When we teach Nehemiah as pastors, and we do the gifts test, what I'm supposed to do is sign you all up for teams now. Are you excited? Bring them in, bro. No, I'm just kidding. No, no. <laughs> but this is what I'm supposed to do. Here's the challenge. If, if, if team is only a group project, it ends up being very transactional. Meaning, you and I have this relationship now where you expect things from me and I expect things from you. Leadership, whatever it is. So here's what you expect from me. To be so funny. <laughs> And you expect a great word with a couple of points. And you expect the service to end right on time. And you expect me uh, to have uh, like a prophetic insight into whatever this, you know, our world is. And to say it in a really interesting way so you can write it down and share it with your family. And you expect us to have all of our programs dialed and our systems. Like you, this is the expectation. If it's a group project alone, here it is. But it is not just transactional. It's family. It's family. Because then here's, uh, if it's not, then here's my expectation of you. Show up, man. Where are you? You know what I mean? Like, if it's, if it's that, then you have these expectations of me, and then I have these expectations of you, and as long as we just perform our duties, we're fine. But at no point do we cross over into family. It's transactional. And when you stop doing or when I stop performing, then we have a problem. But team is group is a group project, but team is also a family effort. Team is a family effort. That's why you do not have a list of serve team. You already know the pathway. Do you want to be a part of the teams that we have? I hope that you would. I want to invite you to have your life changed through discipleship by participating. You want to change the next generation? What I love is when people stop complaining about the next generation and decide that they're going to invest their life, and one of the ways they do it is by serving in that children's arm. One of the ways that they do it is instead of worried about all the other things happening outside of their home that they can't control, they start taking ownership of their own home, and we begin to disciple and grow and learn with our kids together. Amen? Come on, we want to be known, we want authentic community, and we want to do these things. So then we get together in the places where God has designed them to happen. And I know that it is imperfect family. But it's family. We're a bride and a body. We're a family and a team. And that comes with all of us. All the good, the bad, the pretty and the ugly. And somehow... We're supposed to do some stuff together. But not just that. We're supposed to be a people together. I really hope you sense the invitation into family, not just a transactional relationship. I don't want to guilt you into serving. I, I want to cast a vision for our church where you will never hear a giant needs appeal for serve teams because people who are serving are more excited to shoulder tap someone and invite them into the thing that they love doing more than we rely on the stage to do that for us. That sounds like a way better way to do team. Amen.
Because that's relational. Hey, come hang with me, man. I'm out there. Like, I love the greeters team. If I wasn't doing this, I would be a greeter every day of the week. I would hype you up as you came up those stairs. This is who we are. Look at this. Mal Malkaijah, son of Harim. Heshub, Heshev. We're going to hear more about him. He repairs another section. Shalom, son of Halosha. Here, here's one guy. He repairs this next section with the help of his daughters. Come on, girls. Get on that wall. It's a family effort. They weren't waiting for the professionals. They had to get in and do the work. What, are they going to wait for the, 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 the big, strong men to get in there and do the work? Hey, man, my house is full of girls, so ladies, let's go. You know what I mean? Like, this is wild. They repair Shallon and his daughters. They also, later, they help repair the Pool of Siloam. I'm going to leave that alone, but you should look that up. Because in the New Testament, that Easter egg will blow your mind. Next to him, and next to them, and next to them. Can I just invite you into my moment here as, a, as someone that's just been growing with Jesus since I was 16 in a very imperfect context? I mean, my, my, my family was broken. My family was a mess. You think you need an expert? Wait, we needed 17 experts to come over here. I, I, my dad died when I was 12. My mom is 38, raising two sons now. We were insane. I mean, you th it's right. <laughs> my brother right now, I don't know how this happened. My brother right now, as I speak, is preaching at his church at this very moment. Yeah, clap, but also be like, what? Because that's crazy. Now, I don't know what your family arguments looked like. Ours were loud. Because quiet is boring. Spice it up. Scream and yell a little bit. Pepper in some profanity. That is not what I would want you to do. What I'm telling you is that's just what my house did. Some of it, maybe you feel like, I don't know, I can't relate in these different things. I'm just telling you, I grew up in a very chaotic environment because we experienced incredible grief. And, and, and my mom would be dropping F-bombs towards us, but we had just as many F-bombs towards her. It was disrespectful. It was unhelpful. It was unhealthy. It was scary. It was fear-based. There's a lot of reasons why I deal, how I deal with conflict now is because of I was shaped in that environment. But here's what I do know. My mom, who had no expertise, dragged us to church every Sunday. <laughs> now, I know there's a kid in here, and you're like, great, thanks, dude. <laughs> you're welcome, all right? Because that's all she could do. And we would have these moments as a family where we would be fighting. It was so bad. And it would be like the Holy Spirit would suddenly show up because we would be so exhausted just screaming and yelling and being confused and hurt and not knowing how to answer all of the questions. And when the Holy Spirit would just drop in this little circle of my mom and my brother and me, we would just begin to weep with each other. And the family that was tearing each other apart is just trying to fight to stay together. One of the best things she did was bring us to church. It was there that my brother and I encountered the Holy Spirit at 16 and 18, and it's the reason why we're both in ministry today. Now, if you talk to my mom, I will tell you, she'll tell you this straight up. She's like, I don't know how they ended up what they did. <laughs> she'll tell, she's just so honest. She's like, because I certainly didn't have anything to do with it, but I just want to say, My mom had a lot to do with it. And she didn't do it because she was an expert or parent of the year. She did it because she just got to where Jesus was. Get to where Jesus is. Worship team, you can come on up. The good work of God is teamwork. 
And that's why this last point, team takes time. It's probably one of my frustrate most, one of the reasons why I get frustrated with team <laughs> is because it takes time. Not just in a work environment, because here's the thing is, for, for those of us in the congregation, when we talk about gifts, passions, and things, we usually talk about those in the context of our, uh, of our work environment. When pastors and leaders talk about gifts and passions, we usually talk about in the context of the church. And, and sometimes it feels like, where, where does it meet? But you know what? Most believers, when they're asked about where they develop their gifts, they say the majority of them say that I develop those gifts where I use them in both in the church. And that's what we want to do. I want to invite you into a process. I don't want to invite you to be transactional with us, particularly if you want to make New Hope Waitai your home. I don't want you to settle for being a consumer. I want to invite you to be a contributor. You want to contribute to the study halls that we're doing? Absolutely. You want to contribute to the life groups that we have happening? I would love it. You want to contribute to the outreaches in the community and our next gen and our youth and all the different things that we have. And we don't have a thousand because we don't need to have a thousand. We just need a handful of things that God has told us to do, to do excellently and faithfully so we can watch God do something that we couldn't do without him. Amen? So that's why I do want to invite you into growth track. I want to invite you because it is the process by which we have these conversations. You learn about us, you learn about our church, you learn what it takes to get connected, but we also ask the questions, what makes you come alive? If you're young, I invite you. When we do it after Easter, join us. If you're older and you're like, I feel like I've done a thousand of them, do one more. I want to invite you. Because we're all in process, amen? And that process takes time. Family, would you stand? Amen. Hmm. What's that third song that we sang? Draw Me Close. I like that song. That flashed me back to about early uh, 19, or 2000, 1998. I don't know, something like that. Your marriage team takes time. Your team with Jesus will take time. It's going to take more time than you want. I'm going to let you in on a secret. Your relationship in faith will take more time than a 75 or 90 minute service can provide. That's why I want to invite you into family. And I don't say that arbitrarily. I don't say that without knowing that just the word family can bring in so many different feelings. Maybe I should just say, I want to invite you into something that's more than transactional. Into something that is eternal because it's Jesus. Your marriage team will take time. And it won't just be because you did a Bible study and you came to church. The time you spend with Jesus will transform you from the inside out for you to be the husband or the wife that God has designed you to be. Your community, your school, how you get discernment about your future, young adult, in the room. You're worried about you're about to graduate UH, you're in the middle of it, you switched majors, you're trying to go to the next level. I don't really know. The way that you discern that way forward, I want to invite you is to surrender your body, therefore, wholeheartedly to the Lord as your act of worship because it is the only spiritual act of worship we can truly offer him and then the New Testament tells us then you will know what is the good and the pleasing and the perfect will of God for your life but it starts with Jesus because family it will ultimately end and continue with him the end of our life will end here Say it right. Can we just worship? Let's lift up. In fact, I want you to lift up your, your arms and respond to the invitation. Draw close to the heart of the Father today. I promise you, in a couple minutes, we will be done with service. But God will not be done with you. 
Amen? So let's lift up songs. Let's lift up hearts. Let's worship right now together. Lift it up. Lay it all down again. Hear you say that I'm that's what he calls me. than a relationship, more than more money in your pocket, more than a better reputation, more than a better car, more than more comfort, more than anything this world has to offer. You're all we want, Jesus. Amen. You're all we want. So Jesus, would you let us know that you are so near in Jesus' name. Come on, the church says what? Amen. Amen. Woo! Come on, fam. Hey, family, God bless you. If you need prayer this morning, we'd love to pray with you, connect with you. Um, hey, in your bulletin, if you want to know how to take a next step, get more connected in New Hope, follow those prompts in there. We'd love to just do that, connect you. God bless you, and we'll see you next Sunday, fam.